Um, this year, I've been able to again work with the amazing Dr. Ron Eglass. So we need to think about, uh, as, as, as was spoken earlier, the traditional African methods for doing self-organization. These are robust algorithms. These are ways of doing self-organization, of doing entrepreneurship uh, that are gentle, that are egalitarian. Um, so if we want to find uh, a better way of doing that kind of work, uh, we need look only no farther than Africa to find these robust self-organizing algorithms. This is my third year where I've been able to implement culturally situated design tools. Um, and this year has just been amazing. Um, through his work, through us creating biodomes where kids are growing plants, growing their own food in my STEM class. You know, I was lucky and blessed enough to win Teacher of the Year, and I think it was probably because of the work that we're doing. Um, the work that we're doing is NSF funded, and we're writing another grant so we can get more money. We actually um, f uh, got awarded um, a recent grant uh, through the m -Sty grant, and I'm just really proud of that. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of great stuff coming, so please make sure you all just, you know, continue to support your educators, continue to support your teachers out there, um, you know what I'm saying? And let's keep it moving. Them ...with the whole shape. So, so here's the second iteration, third, fourth, and, uh, and so on. So nature has this self-similar structure. Nature uses self-organizing systems. Now, in the 1980s, I happened to notice that uh, if you look at an aerial photograph of an African village, you see fractals. And I thought, this is fabulous. I wonder why. And of course, I had to go to Africa and, and ask folks why. Um, so I got a Fulbright uh, scholarship to, to, to uh, just travel around Africa for a year asking people why they were building fractals, uh, which is a great job if you can get it. When I got there, um, I got to the, 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 this palace of the chief. Uh, and my French is not very good. I said something like, I'm a mathematician and I would like to stand on your roof. Um, but he was really cool about it. He took me up there and we talked about fractals. And, and he said, oh yeah, 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 we, we knew a rectangle within a rectangle within a rectangle. We know all about that. And it turns out the royal insignia has a rectangle within a rectangle within a rectangle. And the path through that palace is actually this, this spiral here. And as you go through the, the paths, you have to get more and more polite. So they're mapping the social scaling onto the geometric scale. It's a conscious uh, pattern. It is, it is not unconscious like a, a termite mound fractal. Uh, this is a, a village in southern Zambia, the ba Baila, uh, built this village about 400 meters in diameter. Um, you have a huge ring. The rings that uh, represent the family enclosures get larger and larger as you go towards the back. And then you have the chief's ring here in, in, uh, towards the back, and then the chief's uh, immediate family uh, in that ring. So here's a little fractal model for it. Here's one house with the sacred altar. Uh, here's the house of houses, the family enclosure, uh, with the, the humans here where the sacred altar would be. And then here's the village as a whole, a ring of ring of rings, uh, with the chief's extended family here, the chief's immediate family here. And then here, there's a tiny village, only this big. Now you might wonder, how can people fit in a tiny village only this big? That's because they're spirit people. It's the ancestors.